In the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Today we celebrate the second Sunday of Epiphany. Epiphany is that season that falls between Christmas and Lent, and oftentimes people kind of wonder, why so long? Why so much about Epiphany? Epiphany is this opportunity for us to unpack the importance of God's incarnation. We often kind of see the birth of Jesus as being that big moment, and then the rest of it's just kind of getting us to Lent. But what I want us to do is take the opportunity in this Epiphany season to actually kind of rest and settle in and marinate a little bit in what Epiphany really means and what we are invited to receive as a gift of this season. The actual incarnation of God does not stop with the birth. Really, the baptism and the miracles and the recognition of Jesus is actually what makes Epiphany so powerful. That recognition begins with the shepherds and with the wise men, and it continues with those who are called to be Jesus' disciples, like what we hear in today's gospel lesson. The incarnation of God, the incoming of God's Spirit here to dwell with us, to be with us, to guide us, that is the gift of Christmas and Epiphany. That's the gift for each one of us. Seeing and declaring God is really what God wants us to do. Now, this past week in my Bible study, I had the opportunity to unpack a pretty simple but profound idea, and that is the difference between what God does for us and what we do for God. Part of what we believe that we are called to do is to be co-laborers with God in the world, and I'm totally guilty of this. This idea of building up God's kingdom along with God. We often speak of that building up and that extension of God's kingdom as something that we are doing along with God. But really, when we look at the Gospels and we look at what Jesus does and says and teaches in the Gospels, we don't actually see the whole help me out, do this work kind of message. What we actually see is Jesus encouraging his followers to wait for God's kingdom or to seek God's kingdom or to declare God's kingdom. What Jesus actually sets up in the Gospels is really something as a gift to us. We don't actually need to help God do what God came to do. God's good. He's got it. Instead, we are given this gift and we're asked to receive it and then to help point other people to that gift. Now, if you're like me, you don't really like that. Because actually it feels much better to do something. It feels much better to kind of work hard and to earn it. And the idea of working with God feels good. Like we actually did something worthwhile because it kind of seems a little strange. It feels a little incomplete that God would just give this to us. But yet that's grace. That's the gift That's God's gift to us, is just for us to receive. We can't earn it. We won't be able to. And the flip side of that is also quite good. We won't lose it. We cannot. We are unable. And that, that is the real gift of Epiphany. We're challenged to do that very simple thing. Just receive and then help others to receive as well. There's a story I heard a few years ago. It was told me by a friend, and it was during the What Would Jesus Do campaign that was at its peak of popularity years back. You remember those bracelets, WWJD? Yes. And he was working with high schoolers, and he had a conversation with one of his high school students. She'd been given that WWJD bracelet, and while she was wearing the bracelet, she was really kind of troubled by it. And after youth group one night, she shared that she was struggling with the concept of the bracelet altogether. And my friends tried to explain that the bracelet's supposed to be a tangible reminder that we are followers of Jesus and that we're to be guided by his actions in every facet of our lives. And she assured him that she understood that part of the concept. Her problem was that she did not see how it was possible for us to even know what Jesus would actually do in any situation, let alone to do that kind of thing faithfully. Well, he tried to explain to her that we have the Bible and we have the wider community and the church and the believers to help us out. And she explained in a exasperated tone, yeah, but don't you see, I am not Jesus. 
And she said, I am fully human, but I am not fully divine. I just don't think it's fair to even assume I could imagine what Jesus would do because I am not God. And I thought she had a point. (laughs) It is actually really good news for us that we are not Jesus. We are not God. What a gift. That's my gift to you this morning. You don't have to do this all. We get to receive this gift. Did you know that in the Gospel of John, John doesn't even tell the story of Jesus' baptism. He refers to it. Instead, he goes right over the idea of the physical baptism, and he goes right into where Jesus is actually interacting with people, where Jesus is beginning to teach and perform miracles and call the disciples. And that kind of moment and engagement and interaction with people, that's the point that John emphasizes, because for John... He understands that what we are called to do is to follow. This emphasis, this emphasis is important for us in this epiphany season. This emphasis is important for us so we don't concern ourselves with all the historic place and time kind of stuff in the gospel. Don't worry about it. Because what really we need to concern ourselves with is how to experience Jesus and then how to encourage others to experience Jesus with us. When people ask Jesus the question, who are you? What are you doing? What are you all about? Jesus often said, come and see. Jesus knew that we had to have this experience of God's presence. Jesus knew that we had to allow God to seep into us. Jesus knew that until people came and saw what God was doing in the world, they could not really believe in that mission. We are the ones who are called to experience God, the real presence of Christ among us. That's why we're here today. That's why it's important to come each week. We experience God's real presence right here in our prayers and in our singing, in the Eucharist that we share. And then we take that real experience and we go out these doors to begin the week We go out these doors to invite people to come and see with us, to experience God's incredible presence alongside with us. And it's through those experiences that we are changed over and over again. When I look at the Gospels, it does seem like there's one person who genuinely understands that experience of God and our responsibility, and that's John the Baptist. John the Baptist seems to really understand that his point on earth is to help everyone see God's real presence and to point to God through him. He does that in today's gospel lesson when Jesus comes alongside. He points his own followers toward Jesus and we see Andrew go and experience Jesus and then go tell his brother Peter. And then that ball gets rolling over and over again. John the Baptist is really the one who we might say is our good model of not being God, but of seeing God and helping others see God too. Perhaps a better question for us to ask is not really what would Jesus do, but what would John the Baptist do? WWJTBD, right? (laughs) That's the new campaign, y'all. John the Baptist is our model. And we are called in this epiphany season to allow ourselves to marinate in God's presence, but not to stop there. But instead, just like John, to experience God's presence and point, point to where God truly is and invite others to join us as well. Jesus says, come and see. And that gift is for you. And that gift is for all those you love. So maybe this week you can encourage someone else to come and see with you. Amen.